Am I? I don't know. I don't have a watch. I just, I just go where they tell me. How do you practice my answer? What did you like out there? I thought it was good. You know, I thought we battled both sides of the ball. I didn't think either side really did better than the other. I thought um started off good with the offense. I think defense came back real strong in the red zone. And um, I thought the offense just edged it out and moved the ball period. So I thought a lo- lot of things we got better at and a lot of things we still got to clean up. Your dad's been here a couple times that, that we've seen. Is he, obviously, he's an interesting observer. Is he, I mean, do you, you guys talking shop much at, Afterwards, no, we just talk about movies and things. Is that right? No, I'm just joking. We <laughs> I'm sure you'll talk about much other than football because um, we enjoy it a lot. But you know, he loves football and he likes to be in a place where he can watch everything. And I mean, he'll I have an office attached to my office, so he just posts up in there and watches a lot of tape and um, comes out with ideas a lot and saying stuff. And it's it's good to have as many eyes as possible looking at stuff and especially on people who you think are talented at what they do and. People you trust their opinion, so I use any advice I can get from anyone. Consider him part of your staff? No. Uh-uh. It's, I think he's enjoying life right now. He's got a pretty good deal um, in Denver and where he lives, and um, he can help me out in other ways anyways without having to be here every day. But what, like, what areas is a few months into this job have you been on so far and trying to see, I mean, have there been any situations where you, you go to him for counsel? Um, no, I, you know, it's been going so fast, you know, it's, you don't have that much time always for phone conversations, but it's real nice when um, it was the first time head coach trying to do the whole offensive thing and, you know, do all the head coach stuff too. And um, you're going a thousand miles an hour and um, sometimes to see everything, you got to really slow things down and um, take your time to look at stuff. And you don't always have that time as a head coach. So it's nice when someone, you know, who thinks similar to you has a similar background, um, you know, and he just sits in a room all day and watches stuff. Um, and he doesn't have any other responsibilities. He can see some things that I'm not always seeing. And just to bring things to light, you know, that maybe I've missed or other people have missed. And um, the more people you have who know what you're trying to do, watch stuff, and there's always something to find. And that's why all of us kind of go crazy with never feeling like we're done, like there's something else to look at. And um, the more you can get people in that situation, that's only a benefit. Talk about going 1,000 miles an hour or whatever. Basically been doing that since training camp, Oakland Falcons. Last July, what do you, so what do you do this next these next few weeks? Um, I, I I try to check out personally. Um, you know, it's been a while. Usually, I get a couple weeks after the season. It was different this year for obvious reasons. Um, it you know I feel like I've recovered. I'm good now, but you know it'll be nice to get away for an extended period of time. And usually, I go to Mexico for a few <clears throat> weeks with my family and um, don't wear a watch around. Don't look at anything. Just wake up when I wake up. Go to sleep when I ever I'm tired, and just to hang out with the kids and. Try to be pretty anxiety free because I know it's the calm before the storm usually. You had a couple big plays yesterday offensively using play action. How important is that overall to, to your offensive philosophy? Uh, I think it's very important. I mean, it's just um, you want to you want to put defenses in a bind and you want to make them start stop certain things. And if you if you want to run the ball, um, you want to make them stop the the run game and. Schematically, how are they going to stop that? And there are certain ways you put teams in a bind, and you make them stop the run, and then you know you have the play action, or you have a bootleg, or something like that. And there's just ways to take pressure off the O line, pressure off the quarterbacks, helps you get some easier explosive plays, not just dropping back all the time and needing your quarterback to do just be unbelievable in the protection and everything. And I think it allows you to get a lot of explosive plays without pressure on people and keeps the defense honest, which is the most important thing. Eric Reed said. The toughest thing about going against your offense was being able to discern a running play versus play action. Is that the most important thing for you when you're, when you're coaching that up? Uh, I mean, I think it is if you're not just dialing up plays. I mean, you want to make, you want to know why they're stopping something. And if they do, um, schematically, there's, there's some hole that they're leaving. And um, so if that's the case, you know what you're going to get if you make it look the exact same. And if it looks the exact same and that guy does what he does to make it a zero yard run, but he also has to get under. A 15-yard route um, that that puts that guy in a bind. Um, so if he's stopping the run, it's going to help out the receiver and the quarterback. If if he's not stopping the run because he's so worried about the receiver and quarterback, now you're getting four yards before that guy shows up. So it makes people hesitate. And if you let a defense tee off in this league, I don't care who it is or who you are on offense, they're usually going to get after you once you become one-dimensional. I think one of the uh, plays is Marquise Goodman's friend down the right side. He came in notoriously fast. How fast has he looked to you, and just and 
how's he coming along? He's come along well. You know, he's he's been fun to work with because, you know, just, I've I've watched Marquis since he was at Texas, and you know, as a guy, you know, I was really interested in coming out of college and just watching him at Buffalo the last few years. I mean, everyone knows how fast he can run, and um, when you can run that fast, it's scary for defenses. They have to back up, and what makes Marquis unique is he can break down also. Um, so when you can run real fast and scare everyone, but you can also break down, um, it helps you get open because um, guys are scared of the touchdown. And once they start squatting on you, you got a, a chance to run by them and get them explosive. And you do that once every few weeks, and you're probably not going to get it again. But it's going to be a lot easier to move the chains because everyone's so scared of what he could do. And that's when that's what speed does. And um, you got to work at it to get those deep ones, whether they, they work or they don't. Just the fact that you're willing to do it usually puts pressure on a defense, makes them defend the whole field. Had it now. It, it, it seemed like he was kind of limited in what they asked him to do with, with Buffalo. Are you trying to figure out exactly you know, how you can use him, what variation, what, what routes he can run? Yeah, always. I mean, you, you try to put guys in the, you try to give guys the best chance to be successful. And then, and then it's up to them once you put them in that situation. And so you want to find guys' skill set, what they do the best. He obviously runs real fast. Um, so you want, to, you want to move him deep. But guys who run real fast, if they only go deep, they're very easy to cover. People just run deep. So you, you, if you threaten them with deep stuff, you can put them on a lot of other routes that also get them open. And that's what's been fun with Marquise because you haven't seen a lot of it on tape. Um, you know, he's been out pretty much outside the numbers his whole career, um, even in college. And now to move him all over, and it's new for him. It's trial and error. But what I like about Marquise is he's not, he's not embarrassed if he's not used to something. He goes out there, puts it all out there. He's not scared to fail. Um, he tries his hardest. And routes that he wasn't very good at on OTA 1, he's much different now. And so you just want to keep putting him in those situations, challenge him. And by the time you get to the season, you kind of got an idea of what he does real good, what he doesn't. And you match it up with the rest of your group. Another one of the big plays yesterday was the George Kittle. Um, has he shown you what you hope to see so far? Yeah, I think George is, you know, like everyone, but but George is coming really battling. Um, you know, he's competed in the run and the pass game. Um, George is a guy you can tell he's going for it because the way he competes on the field and um, which you guys have seen the times you've been out there, but um, mainly what he does off the field too. He, he's really trying to learn it, and that's given him a chance to show up a little bit. Uh, for training camp, do you want it more physical, or do you want the guys to not get hurt? Is that you just want to go through not the motions? You have some competitions going on, but. You've been a part of different styles. What's your take on training camp? Um, no, I want it to be physical. Um, you know, it's, it's just a, a standard of the, how you practice. You know, I don't plan on us tackling very much, um, but you got to thud up, you got to hit people, um, you got to square people up. Um, people don't need to ever take people to the ground, in my opinion. Um, they can show us that on game day, and if you don't know how to take someone to the ground, um, in the NFL, it's going to be tough to just learn that in practice also. So you're at the NFL, you better be able to tackle or you're not going to be there long. But we want to be physical. We want to go fast. And when you get these shoulder pads on, it's more the run game, the protections. Everything's as physical as, physical as it could be um, without taking your feet off the ground and going after guys and taking people to the ground tackling. Oh. And you got to do it then because you don't have that option throughout the season. So if you, skip, you can't do it in OTAs if you skip it in training camp. You only allowed a certain amount of padded practices, and your guys are sore anyway. So I don't want to do much. Um, I don't want to do more than what's allowed. So guys getting nicked up, will you like change the tone of it? I mean, or is you, you're just trying to get guys in shape? Or? No, guys better come to camp in shape. It's not like it used to be. It's not like there's five and a half weeks, and you take the first two weeks just to break them down and get them into football shape. I mean, after two weeks, I mean, camp's almost over. You know, you get into that third preseason game, which is like a game, and then the next, the fourth game is like three days later. Um, and a lot of those guys aren't even on the team after that fourth game. So camp goes fast, and the days of coming to camp and easing yourself into shape, um, usually that person pulls a hamstring, um, misses two weeks, tries to come back at the end of camp, and then is playing catch up the rest of the year, and everyone wants to know why he had a bad year. So if you don't come to camp ready to go, you're going to get worse, not better. Uh, as far as your dad, do you anticipate him also being here around training camp in the regular season here and there? No, I wouldn't think the regular season. I would anticipate he'll come for camp just because he enjoys it, and um, I'm sure he'll come down for practice a week or so, whatever it is. you give him an iPad to look at everything? Uh, he has his own iPad. He's it's huge. He lives on it. He's always watching it, so he's been good. We've got three straight road games in the last two are, what is it, Indy and Washington. Have you determined, are you just going to come home after the Indy game, or do you know? Um, I think we're coming right home after the Indy game. Do we know? Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this. I kind of focus on what's important now. It's a little bit. It, it'll work out, but 
I don't want to be on the road too long, personally. It's our first year together. I think um, being gone too long, you know, we're up here a lot, um, not just coaches, but players also. And anytime you're on the road real long, it, sometimes you go 14 days without seeing your family. And um, I think that can wear on everyone. And um, so I try to avoid that as much as possible. Taking uh, Ruben in for any updates, MRIs or anything? Um, no, I don't think there hasn't been any updates. It's been the status quo. He's been doing great with his rehab. Um, really have no concerns. I think, he, I think he'll be more than ready to go by training camp. That's my, my feeling. Can't promise that, but I'd be surprised if it was. You expect him to first day pads? Yeah, I do expect that it. he would be wearing. Yes. Jared Selleck had a nice reception yesterday between two defenders. Can you talk about him and your? Yeah, we, we have some good competition there. You know, we, we have six guys who I believe are all NFL players. Um, you know, and very rarely do you have six guys on a roster, if ever. So um, we got some good competition there. It's going to be tough for the coaches, but it's definitely a good problem to have. Um, speaking of Selleck, he's, he's done a great job. I've uh, been a fan of him throughout his career. I remember studying him a couple of years ago when he was, I thought he was going to be a free agent. I think, um, I think it was last year, but they ended up signing him before. Um, he went to the market, but you know, he's learning new stuff just like everyone else is. Um, but that whole group in, in general is doing a real good job. You're a big fan of, of Trent Taylor. How has he come along? Has he been everything you hoped so far? Yeah, Trent's done. Trent is, um, you know, he's a competitive guy. He gets after it. Um, he, he's very good at separating. Um, him, like all the rookies right now, everything's been thrown at him. So, um, I'm, you know, he's had some real good days. He's had some days where he's been off. So I'm real excited about Trent. I'm excited for him to soak all this in, get away for a little bit. And I think he'll come back to training camp um, and get some good competition out there. That's training camp one for me. Would you ever consider moving it somewhere away from the facility? Have you been a part of that? Yeah, I've done it both ways. I think there's pluses and minuses to both. I definitely would consider it. Um, you know, sometimes it's a pain, but... Sometimes it's nice to get away. You know, I think it kind of makes your group tighter, makes a little bit less tr distractions. And one thing that's tough always about staying in the same spot is when camp breaks after a few weeks, two weeks or whatever it is, it breaks and everyone gets excited. But then you're back in the exact same spot the next morning at the exact same time and you start to realize there is no camp. We just are here. And that makes the whole season a little longer. Sometimes it's nice to go away when it breaks, you drive back home and it breaks up the monotony of it and you kind of get a different feel. So I like both things. It's, as you always get stressed, how are we gonna travel everything? Are we gonna be used to the situation? But um, there's pluses and minuses to both. Is that monotony? Is well, that what makes you know, breaking the monotony? Is that why those joint practices and one of the reasons the joint practices are so important? Yeah, I'm extremely excited about that. I think. Um, for two reasons. One, it breaks up the monotony, and um, two, it allows you to go against different looks. You know, we have, we have a scheme that plays a lot of cover three, and personally, you get bored of going against it every single play. That doesn't mean you want the defense to just start, start making stuff up to help you on offense. So um, one way you can do that is practicing against other people. You see a few days of different coverages, different fronts, um, which will help prepare you for the season. I think that's almost more important than a preseason game. All the rotating you're doing along the offensive line, is it difficult to project those guys given that there aren't pads and you're sort of limited what you can do physically? Uh, to a degree. Um, definitely in protection. I think protection is one of the toughest things. Um, it's very tough to block defense alignment in general. It's very tough to block them without pads on and stuff. and um, That makes them a lot more slippery. Um, in the run game, it's, it's give and take. Uh, it depends on what type of fronts they're playing, what type of techniques. One, one Good thing about the outside zone is you're not pulling guards and stuff very much, so there's very rarely this. You know, it's usually on somewhat of an angle, um, which you can. I feel like we can get away practicing a little more runs than most people do, um, but it's it's not just with the line; it's with everyone. That's why you never try to get too into anything in OTAs. You'll you'll find out when the pads come on with everyone. Kyle, have you seen this team get tighter over the last couple months? Yeah, I have, and I've been real impressed with our guys. You know, that's something that was real important to me when I got here. I thought it would take a long time. Um, but I, th I think I was kind of saying it yesterday, but I, I really like the environment here with the, with the players. They seem like a c close group. The guys hang out here a lot with each other. Um, I hear about them talking about stuff on the weekends together. And um, from what I've seen without being here last year and stuff, but I feel um, we've gotten closer each day since the offseason started. And a couple last more. Week, last week, uh, the state of the franchise staff, Bowman, let it be known that Joe Staley uh, for the offseason conditioning, <coughs> whatever it was. Uh, you, what that was and whether any other awards have been given out for off-season. Yeah, yeah, I honestly don't even know about the award. I'm sure Ray gave him something silly to make fun of him in the training room and embarrass him. That's what I'm guessing. But, um, 
I mean, Joe is everything I think you guys know he is. He, Joe's here every day, goes as hard as he can um, physically and mentally, um, and he has been um, really fun to work with. Oh, you're still relatively early into being a head coach, but in the, in the first couple of months, are there things that have become easier or more comfortable or surprises, just whatever? Um, I think there's a lots, lots of part, there's many parts about it that are easier, and there's a lot of parts that are tougher. Um, you definitely, you can get watered down with more responsibilities if you're, if you don't select people to help you in certain areas and you're not organized with your time, um, the day can get away from you very fast. And um, that's happened to me a lot at the beginning where I came in and I'm expecting to start tape at, you know, seven in the morning and it's five o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't turned on the tape yet and I'm stressed. I'm like, what just happened? And it's just stuff keeps coming, but I've gotten more used to that. Um, and the easier things is it's, you don't have to worry about as much as you do as a position coach or coordinator. You know, there's lots of things that are out of your control when you're those and you're like, you, you can't really solve as many problems. So you just got to kind of internalize it and deal with it. And um, it's nice when being in the situation of a head coach and being able to work with, um, with John Lynch and Jed and stuff and know like, whenever there is a problem, like, you don't have to sit there and just internalize it. You can, you can go solve problems and work on things to make things better. And you can kind of decide what's not that big of a problem. And I think that stuff makes just coming to work easier um, and more fun. Guys, last one, guys, for sure. And a lot of this practice, you've praised them in recent weeks for, for what they've been able to do within the defenses. Giving them time off sort of, I don't want to say a reward for they're at, but is it kind of telling that these guys have played well? We just want to make sure they're healthy going into going into the camp and, and this extends up here. Uh, I, th I think it's more about trust. Um, you know, with Ahmad and, and Richard, they've I mean, we're not just giving them off because we're throwing them a bone. We're giving it off because um, you know they they are they're tight. They're they're not hurt real bad, but stuff's bothering them, and it's the the it's the last week before we take a month off. And when someone's like that, and they've been um, working every day and doing everything you ask and running, you don't see one in either of them ever being lazy. You trust their intentions are to be out there. And when people tell you they're hurting, and you, you want to listen to that. You, you don't want someone to tell you that and be like, yeah, just fight through it. And then one of them pull a hamstring and they spend their next month rehabbing their hamstring. Then they come to training camp and they're out of shape. Then they really hurt their hamstring again. And it's a chain reaction, which is why they end up having a bad year. Those guys have done everything I've asked. They've been here 100%. Um, they work hard in phase two. They've worked hard in OTAs. And they both have gotten nicked up. And um, we don't want to risk injuring them. All right. We've got Brian here. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.